Tiber was a weak, disgusting Legolas wannabe who was captured by an enemy country and enslaved, but he immediately liked it when he saw warrior baddies with Jayat there and desired to clap them. Just after he was captured, he was woken up and stood by a girl with more mountains than brain named Lim who tells him that the war maiden sought his attention. Meanwhile, in Alsis, a province in Brune where Tiger governed as Lord, Mashes and Bertrand brought news that Tiger had been captured. Titta, Tiger's maid, demanded to know how this was possible, considering the fact that their knights outnumbered the enemy to a large percentage, and there was no way in hell they could have lost the war except due to absolute incompetency among the soldiers. Mashes revealed that Jectid had requested a high ransom for Tiger's release that was unrealistically impossible for them to pay, and if not paid within the demanded time, Tiger would become a property of Jected. At the same time injected, Tiger complained to the war maiden Eleonora that the ransom was too high and should be lowered. However, Eleonora insisted the price remain and warned that if not paid on time, he would become her play toy. Tiger was pissed at them for putting a sword in his mouth and dragging him down to listen to such useless talk, but Eleonora informed him that wasn't the only reason his worthless ass was dragged down and she needed him to do a special favor for her. Later that day, Tiger was asked to display his legendary archery skills with a crude bow in the presence of an audience. He performed embarrassingly, and the audience mocked him and called him a useless piece of shit who thinks he is on Legolas's level. Suddenly, an assassin on the rooftop aimed an arrow at Eleonora, but she cast a spell from her dragon blade, shrinking the arrow. Lim then ordered the men to seize the rebel, but Tiger decided this was his moment to shine, then aimed at the fleeing assassin's legs and shot with remarkable precision, which impacted the assassin's foot, stopping him. This surprised the ejected soldiers as Tiger could aim so perfectly with the crude arrow. Shortly afterward, Eleonora apologized to Tiger for the crude bow and assured him she would behead the soldiers responsible for trying to embarrass him. However, Tiger moved towards her and bowed, asking her not to behead them. He then noticed her well-rounded melons, which stunned him as he jerked backward, realizing how perfect it would be for clapping. Eleonora then revealed to him that she had fallen in love with him at first sight for having such an ideal aim and believed with his archery skills he wouldn't miss. She pointed out that during the war, Prince Ragnas of Brune was killed, which caused Brune's soldiers to break rank and flee, allowing her forces to attack from behind. She found Tiger entertaining for his fighting spirit and resilience because after everything, he was still fighting and even tried to kill her. Lim wasn't interested in the whole hot love nonsense and hated Tiger for his ugly face. Noticing this, Eleonora revealed that Lim's anger stemmed from Tiger shooting down her horse during the battle. Eleonora then offered Tiger a position under her command, promising to treat him as one of her own, but Tiger declined the offer and told her to go to hell. He insisted he can't abandon Alsis, a state he inherited from his father because of massive melons and curvy physique, as he is not known as simp like a useless ornal teenager. The next day, while walking around the castle, Tiger encountered a baldy with a funny face named Rurik. He wondered why the dickhead shaved his head and warned him to desist from such unforgivable acts. However, the idiot yelled at him in anger that he was ordered by the war maiden to sacrifice whatever was most important to him. However, he bowed his head and thanked Tiger for saving him. Later on, Tiger displayed his impressive archery skills, earning admiration from the soldiers, who nicknamed him the Jens Robin Hood. Embarrassed, Tiger tried to find a place to chill and stumbled upon a dragon pup. As he admired the creature and wanted to pet it, Eleonora appeared with no plot armor, asking him to pet her instead. Startled, Tiger jerked back, but Eleonora insisted she wanted him to use his archery skills to hit the right spot inside her. That night, Tiger was unable to sleep as he pondered on Eleonora's words. He wondered what she meant by that. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door, and Rurik informed him that an old man with a brunish accent had been captured. Tiger rushed to see the old man and was relieved to find Bertrand, who revealed that soldiers were marching towards Alsis and Tiger needed to return home quickly. Determined to head back home, Tiger was stopped by Eleonora, who insisted he wasn't going anywhere. Meanwhile, in Thenardier, a province in Brune, Duke Thenardier, the governor of Thenardier, sent his son Zion to invade Alsace. With the Prince of Brune dead and the kingdom in chaos, he concluded that this was the perfect time for such an attack. Zion, who already hated Tiger, the governor of Alsace, was delighted by the mission. His father also provided him with monstrous dragons to aid in the battle to conquer Alsace. At the same time, in Leitmeritz, ejected, Tiger continued to insist on returning to Alsace to help against the coming invasion. Eleonora reminded him that he was a prisoner in case his dumb brain had forgotten and that his ransom had not been paid. Tiger begged to go, promising to return as soon as the invasion was over, but Eleonora pointed out that he was just one man and could not stand against Thin Armier's soldiers, even if he was a rip-off Hawkeye calling a fool's errand and suicidal. She offered to even live him if he truly had a death wish, 
explaining that his emotions were clouding his judgment and that he needed a plan instead of rushing into battle like a mushroom head. Realizing that Elinora wouldn't let him go, Tiger devised a strategy and asked her to lend him her troops. This shocked everyone, as a prisoner was asking for an army, and Eleonora laughed hysterically, calling him an audacious moron with zero IQ. She however told him she would agree only if he ceded all of Alsace to her. To which Tiger desperately agreed, provided she governed fairly and kept the residents safe. Minutes later, Eleonora and her troops rode to battle with Tiger to save Alsace. She pointed out that Thenardier's soldiers outnumbered theirs. Tiger revealed that Thenardier did not know Alsace like he did. He knew every hill and valley that could be used for ambushes. Meanwhile, Zion, riding his dragon and leading his soldiers into Elsis, promised to ruse anyone like Sushi who stood in his way. In Elsis, the townsfolk scrambled to safety, with many fleeing to the mountains and forests. Tita then ordered the rest to enter the temple, believing it to be the safest place since Thenardier wouldn't risk destroying it. She decided to stay at Tiger's mansion, awaiting his return. At the mansion, she stared at Bo, recalling Tiger telling her it was a family heirloom passed down from his ancestors. She had begged him earlier on not to fight in the war, but Tiger insisted on fighting as the king of Brune had a call for the counts to join the war. He promised to return, leaving her in tears. Meanwhile, Thenardier's army entered the town, breaking through the gate and pillaging everything. Zion watched from a hill with his dragons, wishing to test them by destroying the city with fire but remembering he was warned not to take the dragons into the city. A soldier reported that the villagers had escaped into the forest or holed up in the temple. Zion then instructed them not to touch those in the temple as he headed toward Tiger's mansion. Following this, Tita noticed someone had entered the doors of the mansion and quickly went to see who it was, finding Zion. Fearful, she yelled at him to get the F out of the house, but Zion advanced, drawing his sword and slashing part of her clothes. Scared, she grabbed a kitchen knife and charged at him, but he flung the knife out of her hands and ripped her upper plot armor, exposing her moderate melons. She then retreated to the balcony holding Tiger's heirloom bow as Zion called her a filthy slave and advanced towards her. Just as he tried to grab her soft melons, his grabby, disgusting hand was impaled by an arrow, shocking him as blood dripped from his hand onto his face while he cried for his mummy like a disgusting pair of. Just then, Oliver Queen came dashing in like a worthy protagonist, ordering Tita to jump from the balcony. As he advanced, his horse's legs were sliced by a Thenardier soldier, causing the horse to fall and Tiger be thrown off. Noticing this, Eleonora summoned Wynne using her dragon blade to prevent them from hugging the ground passionately. At that moment, Tiger then realized Eleonora had the power to control the wind with her dragon blade Arifar. However, he questioned why Tita stayed in the mansion instead of seeking safety, and she revealed she wanted to keep the heirloom bow safe. Tiger called her a fish brain, saying her life was more important than the bow. Suddenly, an arrow flew towards Tiger's face, but he caught it just in time, injuring his palm. He raided his bow and snapshot of the Thenardier soldier, breaking the hilt of his bow in the process. That instant, Eleonora prepared to attack with her army, and Tita gave Tiger the heirloom bow to use. Tiger then had a flashback of his father giving him the bow and instructing him to use it only when necessary. As he wielded the black bow and strung it, the rhythm of the string resonated with the wind. That instant, Eleonora and her troops chased after Zion and the Thenardier soldiers, but they fled into the plains to regroup and re-strategize. Shortly after, at the Thenardier camp, Zion was furious that the Jacted army was helping Tiger and he called Tiger a traitorous swine and vowed to stick Tiger's bow up his ass and shoot the arrow down his throat so they aligned properly. Zion then prepared his battle plan, splitting his remaining army into three groups while he stayed with his dragons and a few other men. On the other hand, Eleonora strategized with her team on how to attack. Lim requested ropes and Tida, who interrupted the conversation assured them she would get ropes from the townspeople who were willing to help ensure Tiger won the battle. Tita then inquired about Eleonora's relationship with Tiger, and Eleonora informed her that Tiger was her prisoner. But Tita, the love interest, insisted on not giving up on her crush and vowed never to let Eleonora have him. As they headed into battle, Eleonora drew her dragon gear in charge of the enemies, her armies following suit. She summoned Arafar and used the power of the wind to deflect the arrow attack from Thenardier's soldiers. Meanwhile, Tiger, with a legolas move, launched arrows at the enemies with exceptional precision, impressing Eleonora, who still wanted his long arrow inside her. Suddenly, they heard the alarming sound of a horn, halting their movement as they wondered where the sound came from. At that moment, a ferocious dragon appeared. Some useless soldiers tried attacking the dragon, but they were flattened as their souls were cemented to the ground. Tiger then launched an arrow at the dragon's eyes, but it deflected as the dragon's skin was impenetrable. Zion laughed at their worthless efforts, assuring them that their end had come. However, reinforcements soon arrived for Tiger as Lim appeared with more soldiers, attacking from the rear. 
Utilizing the opportunity, Eleonora moved to challenge the dragon and unleash her dragon blade. She soon summoned a powerful whirlwind, striking the crowd and rupturing the earth. That instant, the powerful whirlwind elevated the dragon, and with a devastating strike, the dragon was torn asunder into two halves. Zion, deceived into thinking Tigri had a large number of reinforcements on the way to his camp, considered sending his winged dragon but decided against it, fearing it would be torn apart like the first one. After much brooding, Zion came up with a brilliant idea and decided to escape to save his life. He ordered his men to retreat, but his advisor, a man with a funny mohawk, suggested they could tough it out. Infuriated, Zion bitch-slapped his ugly head and ordered him to retreat as instructed. As the Thenardier army retreated, the battle entered the next phase. Tiger and his team chased after them, soon coming face to face with Zion, who challenged Tiger to a duel to end the battle without a further bloodshed. Tiger accepted and advanced towards him as he fired an arrow at Zion, which he effortlessly shielded, mocking Tiger for using a shitty weapon in a duel and urging him to get a better weapon. Tiger fired another arrow at the same spot on Zion's shield and then another while Zion kept calling him a green arrow wannabe. Zion soon grew tired of Tiger's efforts and charged at him to cut off his head. In that moment, Tiger fired a final arrow at the same spot, this time penetrating the shield impaling Zion's hand, prompting him to cry out in pain like a disgusting donkey. Eleonora was greatly impressed, thinking Tiger would make a fine husband for his well-thought-out plan. Tiger then aimed at Zion and told him to save his last breath for the devil. But just then, the Thenardier armies charged at Tiger and Eleonora ordered her troops to defend him as the soldiers clashed swords. Suddenly, the mighty beat of its wings, the winged dragon launched into the sky with Zion riding it, attempting to escape. Furious at seeing the idiot escape after all the menace he had caused, Tiger suddenly heard a voice echo from the black bow, urging him to shoot down the dragon. He had a flashback of Tita's assault by Zion, which enraged him the more and he aimed at the dragon. At that moment, Eleonora noticed her dragon blade Arafar powering the bow, which amazed her as she watched as Tiger launch a glowing arrow towards the dragon and the arrow with the speed of lightning slashed the dragon, causing it to descend and nosedive into the ocean with Zion. With their commander dead, the Thenardier soldiers lost their spirit and were defeated. The following day, Tita, excited that Tiger was back home, decided to welcome him. She entered his room only to find him and Eleonora in Asa's position, which stunned her. Hours later, she complained bitterly about Eleonora's cravings for plot development, but Tiger, the Rizzless idiot, told her it wasn't a big deal as he was actually enjoying it. Eleonora then informed them that she would be heading back to the ejected capital. Later that day, Eleonora asked Lim to stay behind with Tiger and Alsace as she went to meet the king. At the same time, Tiger decided to go around the village to see how the townspeople were doing and Tita insisted on going with him. Meanwhile, Lord Thenardier discussed with a mysterious, ugly, cloaked man what they intended to do with Tiger and Eleonora. Lord Thenardier revealed they sought the services of assassins to rid themselves of Tiger and planned to pit another war maiden against Eleonora. In Silesia, the ejected royal capital, Eleonora sought an audience with the king. The king questioned her about taking an army into Brune territory without royal permission, needing an answer to determine a fitting punishment for her reckless behavior. Eleonora explained that Tiger, the lord of Alsis, hired her to protect Alsis's peace. The king was stunned and angry, accusing her of using the royal army as common mercenaries. Just then, Sophia, with massive cannons the size of the king's head, tried to appease the king on Eleonora's behalf. Shortly afterward, while Eleonora brooded over her weird choice of men, Ludmila, a war maiden with a flat plot as a surfboard, approached her and mocked her for thinking highly of herself, as she is unaware she is just a side character in this anime. Eleonora retorted, calling Ludmila a short, plotless, immature midget who should only talk to her when she matured and grew bigger melons, and then told her to get the heck out of her face instead of spitting trash. As they faced off for a Mortal Kombat poster, Sophia hit both their heads with her gear and intimidated them with her massive pillows, telling them to be nice to each other as they still have a long way to go when melons are concerned. However, Eleonora thanked Sophia for helping her with the king, but when Ludmila interrupted, Eleonora silenced her, telling her to scram as the adults were having a conversation. As Ludmila left, Sophia revealed to Eleonora that Ludmila had been in contact with Duke Thenardier for a long time, and her family had been on good terms with House Thenardier before she was born. She further warned Eleonora that Ludmila could be an enemy to her and Tiger. Later that day, Tiger and Tita arrived home to Mashes and Lim. Mashes demanded to know why the enemy was in the house, so Tiger explained everything that had happened. Mashes apologized to Lim for suspecting her and then asked Tiger about his future plans, so Tiger revealed he planned on attacking Duke Themardier, determined to protect Alsace and its people from any threat. Afterward, Tiger went from county to county, seeking for allies to defeat Themardier, while Masha sought an audience with the king to inform him of the situation. 
Later on, Lim took Tiger to Eleonora, and on getting there, Eleonora revealed that she got the king's permission on two conditions. One, that if Alsace became Eleonora's territory, she would hand it over to the kingdom of Jected and put the kingdom's interests first, and two, that any nobleman with ties to Duke Thenardier who asserted the duke's victory was in the king's best interest could take part in the war as they saw fit. Just then, they heard a knock at the door, and Lin went to check. Eleonora revealed to Tiger that not all the war maidens were on their side, and one in particular, looked like a mop stick, posed a risk. At that moment, Ledmila burst into the room and introduced herself to Tiger as the bearer of the cleansing spear. She insisted they talk in private somewhere else. They set out on a horse, but Eleonora and Lim followed them too, pretending to be heading to Rodnik because she was just a weird jealous bitch. Lemila then told Tiger that she was one of Duke Thenardier's allies and he didn't stand a chance against the Duke. As they talked, Tiger noticed they rode into a trap and had been boxed in by assassins. Suddenly, an arrow came flying towards Tiger, which he narrowly evaded as the assassin jumped on trees and used a blowpipe to send poisonous darts at Eleonora, which she deflected with her dragon blade. Tiger then shoots an arrow at the assassin, impaling and sticking him to a wall. Meanwhile, another assassin came flying towards Eleonora, but she sliced him open to see what his arteries looked like. At that instant, a venomous viper charged and bit Lim's soft melons, so Eleonora sliced the snake in half, but Lim became poisoned and unconscious. Tiger caught her and taking advantage of the situation, sucked her soft melon and extracted the poison in the process. Four other assassins came flying towards them, but Ludmila cast a spell using her driving gear and summoned sharp ice blades that impaled the assassins, stunning Tiger. Ludmila then left to fetch a doctor, and Tiger thanked her for her help while he carried Lim and rode away with Eleonora on their horses. Several days later, while having a shower plot, Eleonora told Lim how Tiger saved her from a venomous viper that tried to kill her, and she promised to reward him for his kindness. Meanwhile, Tiger went for a bath and unexpectedly encountered Ledmila, who was furious at him for staring at her exposed plot. She readied her dragon blade to send the culture idiot to Nirvana, but Tiger begged for his life, leading her to knock him unconscious instead. Later on, the group explored Roderick's marketplace, where they came across street food. However, despite being hungry, Ludmila refused to try anything because she was a proud, plotless side character. However, Tiger persuaded her to try some, which made Eleonora jealous, leading to another petty fight between the two girls. The fight ended abruptly when Ludmila decided to leave the moronic route for her homeland, Olmutz. Meanwhile, Eleonora suspected Ludmila was plotting something and predicted that she would mobilize her troops towards Leitmeritz to aid Thenardier. Ellen's suspicion soon came to pass like a soothsayer, so she organized her allies and they planned their next move. Meanwhile, Ludmila assembled an army on Eleonora's Leitmeritz border. Eleonora then asked Tiger whether her army should fight Ludmilla's troops or stand against Lord Thenardier's attack in Alsace, so Tiger suggested they attack Ludmilla's army at Eleonora's border. The battle commenced, and amidst the cold, the soldiers blew the horn, sounding the war cry. They fought fiercely, with arrows raining down from all directions. However, neither side achieved victory and both armies retreated with casualties. Ludmilla's troops retreated to the mountains, strengthening the gate of her camp with ice, making it difficult for Eleonora's troops to gain entry. Concerned that the cold would eventually defeat her soldiers, Eleonora proposed using her arafar to swing around Ludmilla's camp and wipe out her troops. Lim argued it was a dangerous idea and Tiger tried to dissuade Eleonora, telling her she was too important to him to engage in such a difficult plan and upon hearing those words, Eleonora got excited. Before long, Tiger then decided to find the path leading to the peak of the mountain where Ledmilla's camp was and disguised himself in a bear hide. Hours later, he was famished and saw a fox, so he shot it. Just then, Ledmilla appeared and asked if he was the one who shot the fox from a far distance. Tiger then decided to show her his legolas skills, which impressed her, and she asked him to be her daddy. Later that night, they stayed in a cave, and Ludmila asked Tiger to take off his pelt, but he insisted on keeping it on. She then asked for his name, and he told her it was Urs. She further asked him to serve her, but he declined, saying he had to return home. A few minutes later, she gave him her creamy tea, and he was delighted to see her smile for the first time. He asked her why she ventured alone into the mountains, and she explained that being a war maiden meant working with people she disliked for the good of the country and upholding her family's reputation, so sometimes she liked to have fun, which made Tiger realize she wasn't that bad after all. They bid each other farewell and Ludmila left. Shortly after, Tiger located the route to Ludmilla's citadel and led Eleonora and her troops there. Upon arrival, they found the entrance heavily secured with defense mechanisms, so Eleonora decided to blow away the gate and charge towards it, summoning Arafar and casting a mighty wind spell. However, the spell had no impact on the gate, but the attack alarmed Ludmilla's soldiers, 
who aimed their bows and rained arrows on Eleonora. Tiger whisked her away to safety, preventing her from having holes other than the hole she already had. With time running out, Tiger asked Arafar to lend its strength to him as he aimed his black bow at the gate. He fired an arrow with a blinding light that completely shattered it, allowing Eleonora and her soldiers to gain entry into the citadel. Charging into the citadel, Eleonora confronted Ludmila, who was prepared for battle. They clashed her dragon gears with Ludmila casting a spell that unleashed sharp ice blades from the ground, but Eleonora countered with a spell that vanquished the ice blades. Ludmila then froze the ground, causing Eleonora to leap onto the top pavement to avoid the ice. So at that instant, Ludmila unleashed a giant ice blade, but Eleonora evaded and jumped down. That moment, they both charged at each other, commanding their individual dragon gears as they struck each other, causing a tremendous energy blast that nearly destroyed the entire building, which surprised Tiger at the power of the War Maidens. Suddenly, an assassin advanced toward Ludmila, but Tiger shot an arrow so fast that it stopped the fool. Upon seeing the low-budget Legolas move, Ludmila then realized that Tiger was Urz, the dude with the bear hide from earlier. Noticing she had been scammed by the idiot, she slapped his ugly face and asked him why he decided to save her. He told her to take it as a favor for her company the night before. That moment, Ludmila was wet and needed some of his green arrow targeting skills to target her right spot this time, so she agreed to stay neutral in the war and renounced her support for Thenardier. With that, the Thenardier made their next move and brought another faction into play. They enlisted Roland, Bruin's mightiest knight who wielded the powerful, invincible sword Durande, to put down Tiger, now seen as a traitor in Bruin. Before long, Tiger moved his army comprising both Bruin-injected soldiers and established a camp, but the temporary union brought disputes that Tiger had to resolve. In the meantime, Tiger sought some alone time away from war and the Magnum craving war maiden and lay in a field. Suddenly, the purple driving cub dashed at him, causing him to roll down a hill into a pond. That moment before him was the greatest scene in anime history. Sophia running towards him with no plot armor and her massive cannons displayed in 4K. She tripped and fell on top of him, which made Tiger Magnum fully loaded and charged, ready for mayhem. But the 18-rated scene was soon cut short by Eleonora, who couldn't believe a prisoner was enjoying more than both kings of the two useless kingdoms. The next day, Sophia introduced herself to Tiger and informed him that the royal palace had accused him of treason and stripped him of his rank and governorship of Alsace, and a new magistrate from the capital would govern Alsace temporarily. Soon, Tiger learned that Roland and his troops were on their way to attack them on the order of the King of Brun. Tiger then summoned other dukes and solicited their support, but though they were hesitant at first, they decided to join the fight to stop Duke Thimardier's cruelty. However, Tiger and his army ready for war against Roland and his troops. That instant, Roland unleashed his mighty dragon-slaying sword, which could tear even the heavens. He charged at Tiger's armies, obliterating them with one slash. Noticing they would be out of soldiers if they let the Mad Knight continue his merciless rampage, Eleonora was enraged and then attacked Roland to save her troops. Roland was, however, impressed by her parrying his attack and simultaneously, some armies tried attacking Roland, but he slashed through them effortlessly, like they didn't matter. Meanwhile, every life mattered. Just then, Eleonora attacked him and they clashed weapons again, noticing Roland was aiming to slice Eleonora's huge melons as that had always been his plan. Tiger advanced to save her. He rode towards Roland, aiming at him, but that instant, Roland returned the gesture and charged at him. Roland tried slashing Tiger's head, but he dodged the death threat and then shot his arrow to the sky and whisked Eleonora to safety. Roland determined to end all Romeo and Juliet ripoffs from the face of the earth, chased after them, but Tiger's arrow projected downward from the sky and stabbed his horse, rendering him horseless and out of the chase. That arrow move displayed by Tiger shocked him, and he wondered how Oliver Queen made it to this low-budget anime. Meanwhile, as they rode off, Eleonora discovered that Tiger had been slashed and wounded. Minutes later, she then realized a horde of soldiers was chasing them. So at that instant, Sophie appeared and told them to scram and leave the unfortunate soldiers to her. As they scrambled, Sophie activated her dragon gear and unleashed its powers, summoning the powerful Falvarna. Just then, a powerful energy blast defeated the soldiers and erected an energy wall, obstructing anyone from advancing. Roland emerged with his mighty Durande and demanded Sophia take down the energy wall. When she refused, Roland struck down the wall and charged towards her, and they clashed weapons. However, Sophia soon cast a spell and disappeared. A few minutes later, a Brune soldier approached Roland, informing him that Mashes had ambushed their troops and a few armies. Roland then had a flashback of Duke Thenardier and Ganelian instructing him to eradicate Tiger and his Jectidian army, citing the king's illness as the reason. Doubting the old scummy duke's credibility, Roland resolved to deal with Tiger and his forces before seeking an audience with the king. 
Meanwhile, Tiger received treatment in the camp while Mashes explained to the team that he had been unable to see the king, who Du Thenardier and Ganelon were manipulating. With the help of Prime Minister Bedouin, Mashes discovered that the king's mental state had deteriorated after his son's death, and the orders to kill Tiger were not from the king. That night, Eleonora entered the room where Tiger was in a coma, assuring him she would finish the war in his stead. Tiger soon awoke, recalling his clash with Roland as he picked up the black bow, which compelled him to move. Accompanied by Tita, they ventured into a fog-covered building and encountered a giant female statue of the goddess Ternafa, the goddess of night, darkness, and death. That instant, Tita was possessed by the goddess who spoke through her and asked Tiger if he wanted power. She, however, told him she could give him power on the condition that he aim at Tita, and shot her to prove if truly he had been acknowledged by his bow. Just then, Tiger raided his bow, which glowed with energy, and he aimed at Tita and fired the arrow impacted and she was free from the goddess's possession. Afterward, Tiger headed to the battlefield where Eleonora had outsmarted some of the enemies, trapping them in a muddy swamp, and he defeated them with arrows. Shortly after, she faced Roland and they clashed weapons, realizing his strength, she pulled him away from the battlefield. Sophia soon joined the fight and together, they unleashed powerful magic attacks on Roland. However, he emerged unscathed, advancing towards them. At that moment, Tiger shot an arrow at Roland, but it broke against his impenetrable armor. Moving towards Roland, Tiger and Eleonora explained their goal of defeating Duke Thenardier and promised to accept any punishment afterward. They asked Roland to join them, but he refused, determined not to allow insurgents to run free. Prepared for another round of attacks, Tiger, the wounded, launched an arrow at Roland. The arrow collided with Roland's Durandal, emitting a powerful energy blast that ripped apart the ground. Realizing he was injured and unable to continue, Roland surrendered and his armies withdrew. A few months later, at Tiger's camp, Roland informed them he was heading to the capital to seek an audience with the king. Despite Tiger's warnings about the dangers, Roland insisted on going. Meanwhile, Eleonora received a letter from a fellow war maiden, Sasha, asking for her help, so she decided to return to Jekta for a while, and Tiger promised to do his best while she was gone. Following this, Roland arrived at the palace and was asked to wait in a room. Realizing he had been trapped, he tried breaking the door open, but Duke Ganelon unleashed poisonous bees that stung him to death. Following this, the two evil dukes, Ganelon and Thenardier, quarreled over the death of Roland, Brune's strongest knight. Thenardier was furious over Roland's death as his death would expose the country's border to invasion from neighboring countries who would invade them knowing their strongest knight was dead. As days passed, Muzanol, a neighboring country practicing slavery, decided to exploit Roland's death and attacked Brune, plundering and enslaving citizens. Several weeks later, Tiger led soldiers to prevent a national crisis and stop the Muzanol troops from taking more Brune citizens into slavery. They stumbled upon the mass movement of Brune citizens being taken captive by Muzanol and soon witnessed soldiers chasing a girl to capture her. Tiger shot the soldiers with precision, ending their worthless lives and rescuing the helpless girl who saw him as her knight in shining armor. Following this, Tiger and his army launched repeated sneak attacks against the Muazinal army, forcing them to retreat and reducing their numbers drastically. Shortly afterward, the Muazinal army lined up Brune's citizens, who had evaded capture and sentenced them to death, forcing Tiger to meet the Muazinal ugly commander with a ridiculously long face. Tiger then approached the barbaric Muazinal commander and his troop, and he told them that they would burn in hell close to the devil for taking the lives of innocent Brune civilians. The commander then ordered his archers to kill Tiger, but they soon realized the ejected army ambushed them. Utilizing the distraction, Tiger aimed at the ugly commander and shot from a long distance, killing him instantly. Seeing this, the Muzinal army scrambled and Tiger's army chased after them. Tiger then freed the captured Brune citizens and a little girl thanked him for his benevolent act. Unbeknownst to Tiger, the Muzinal army he defeated was just the beginning, as more soldiers were marching towards them in the thousands, Realizing the war had taken a major toll on his soldiers and the large number of civilians they had to protect, Tiger knew they had no chance of winning. The following day, as they moved with the civilians, a knight informed Tiger that the Muzinal armies were charging in their direction. Tiger advanced to create an ambush, but it was too late, as the enemies were already there. He and his archers took out some soldiers, but the overwhelming numbers advanced. Just then, Tiger noticed Ludmila and her mighty troop of soldiers. On the other hand, Eleonora and Lim visited Sasha in Legnica, finding her bedridden and not improving. Sasha had always been like a big sister to Eleonora and Ludmila, training them and teaching them to use their dragon gear only when necessary. Sasha informed Eleonora that war maiden Elizaveta had invaded her territory out of vengeance. She further explained that during a joint mission against pirates, Elizaveta accused Sasha's soldiers of deliberately leading the pirates to her army despite no evidence supporting this claim and ever since, Elizaveta has cut off all contact. 
Sasha wished her dragon gear would release her from her role, as she no longer wanted to be a war maiden. Eleonora decided to offer her support in defending the territory and swore to drive out the vengeful bitch, Elisaveta. Meanwhile, the new commander of the Muzanellan army, Barbaros, discovered a coalition between the Jected army and Tiger's forces due to his sword maiden's interest in Tiger. He then decided that if the sword maiden is thick with well-rounded plots, he would ally with her to help Tiger defeat the Nardir, but if she's got a face like the Middle East, he would rather choke her with his balls. Elsewhere, Tiger met with Lamila to discuss allying, but she was rather disappointed when she noticed that the dude was a weak, desperate dweeb who needed help by all means and wouldn't mind bum-licking just to get it. Ludmila then gave him some tips on how to be an alpha male as beta males always end up dead anyways, but Tiger didn't give a shit and asked her help anyways, so Ludmila agreed in exchange for a favor. She demanded to know if he was the one who blew open the fortified gates of her citadel earlier on as Eleonora's Arafar wasn't powerful enough. Hesitant at first, Tiger showed her the black bow, which she initially dismissed as a useless stick. He explained its immense power, though he didn't fully understand it and sometimes lost consciousness after using it, so they decided to use the bow as a last resort. Later that night, one of Tiger's men informed him that the captive girl he rescued, Regin, refused to eat. Tiger offered her food, but she insisted on having his meat instead and then asked for a favor. Meanwhile, Eleonora led a combined force of Legnica and Leitmeritz troops to confront war maiden Elisaveta, who had an iris disorder called heterochromia and saw only in two colors. Eleonora soon prepared to attack, but at that moment, Lim had a flashback of Sasha begging her to watch over Eleonora, knowing her recent actions would make her a target. Lim tried protecting Eleonora, but she insisted on facing Elisaveta herself. The war began with both parties charging at each other while Elisaveta and Eleonora faced off on the outskirts. They unleashed their dragon gears in an intense fight, with Eleonora's whirlwind countered by Elisaveta's surge of electricity. In an explosive clash, Eleonora's wind eventually overwhelmed Elisaveta's electricity, pushing her back and forcing her to surrender. Realizing Eleonora was desperate to end her, Elisaveta then warned her that time was being wasted as the war against Tiger was rapidly escalating. She revealed that Ganolin had likely mobilized his army against Tiger, and that Muzanil had also sent a huge number of soldiers to Brune. Elisaveta then offered to withdraw her forces from Legnica and form a one-year non-aggression pact, but Eleonora agreed on the condition that Elisaveta sincerely apologized to Sasha for the invasion. Following this, Eleonora quickly mobilized her troops towards Leitmeritz. Meanwhile, an envoy returned with a message from Ludmila to Barbaros, calling him an invader with no right to be on Brunian soil without cause. Ludmila asserted they had no business with an idiot like him and advised him to return to his country. Barbaros agreed that he was a moron but refused to back down from a fight just because a skinny war maiden with zero plots threatened him. In the midst of the intense battle, Tiger and Barbaros clashed with their armies, each trying to outmaneuver the other. Tiger, known for his strategic brilliance, split his forces into seven units to counter any surprise attacks. Confident in his strength, Barbaros observed Tiger's moves, waiting for the right moment to strike. Tiger's forces then fortified their position on a hill preparing for the inevitable confrontation. However, scouts reported the enemy's movements numbing their fortified defenses and multiple banners, which indicated a strong united front. Despite being prepared, Tiger's archers needed help hitting their targets, which was part of Tiger's elaborate plan to mislead the enemy. Unfazed by Tiger's initial maneuvers, Barbaros positioned his troops to lay siege to the hill. However, Tiger revealed a clever trick, disguising soldiers as refugees to launch a surprise attack on Barbaros' forces. With Ludmila's magical abilities and Tiger's leadership, they caught Barbaros off guard, shifting the battle in their favor. Barbaros, however, quickly adapted to his strategy, sending reinforcements to counter Tiger's advances. Despite Tiger and Ludmila's efforts, they found themselves surrounded by enemy divisions, their forces dwindling as exhaustion set in. Amidst the chaos, unexpected reinforcements arrived, boosting Tiger's army and shifting the battle's momentum again. Knights from various counties came to support Tiger, following Mash's pleas and August, Tiger's former comrade apologized for not arriving sooner. This reinvigorated Tiger's weary soldiers and allowed Eleonora and Tiger to take a brief respite, regrouping and replenishing their supplies for the upcoming battles. Barbaros, sensing the change in momentum, stubbornly refused to retreat, determined to complete his mission to conquer Brune. However, as losses mounted and news of defeat at sea reached him, Barbaros had no choice but to reconsider his plans. With a heavy heart, he retreated from Brune, acknowledging Tiger's victory. Despite his retreat, he sent an envoy to Tiger's camp to extend congratulations, hoping to save face after the defeat. Afterward, Ludmila attempted to decipher Barbaro's true intentions, but Tiger, exhausted from the battle, fell asleep as she spoke. The next day, Eleonora arrived at the base camp, 
sparking tension when she saw Tiger and Ludmila resting close to each other, reigniting her rivalry with Ludmila over Tiger's attention. Meanwhile, Lin reflected on her initial doubts about Tiger's abilities and acknowledged his rise as a significant force in Brune. That night, Tiger met Eleonora in a secluded spot while he expressed his sorrow for the lives lost under his command. When Eleonora asked if he regretted fighting, he replied that he did not. However, she encouraged him, telling him to shoot for the sky because if he missed, he would land among his dreams and that instant, he vowed to honor the memory of those who had died in the war. Following the recent events, Tiger slept peacefully in his chamber and then suddenly, a girl named Valentina entered his room through a portal. As she tried to touch him, his hand instinctively reached out and touched her plot, startling her. Realizing he was still asleep, she decided to leave him unharmed. With the battle over, Tiger and his coalition army traveled for four days and hid in Perche, thanks to their new alliance with Emil. While there, Eleonora thanked Ludmila for assisting Tiger in the battle during her absence, but immediately suggested that Ludmila should return to her own country. Ludmila retorted that Eleonora should mind her own business and left. The next day, Tiger was called to an early meeting wondering about the urgency. Mashes informed him that someone in the camp bore a striking resemblance to the supposedly deceased Prince Regnus, causing Tiger to question who it might be. As they discussed, someone informed Tiger that Regin, one of the rescued individuals, wished to see him. When she entered, she shockingly revealed herself as Prince Regnus, surprising everyone. Lim demanded proof, and Regin reminded Tiger of their time together six years ago. However, Mashes found it hard to believe that the princess had fooled them all their lives by posing as a boy and collapsed in shock. Regin then explained that she had disguised herself as a boy because of her mother, as queens with only daughters were not honored, and the chances of succeeding to the throne were slim. Eleonora couldn't believe the crap, suggesting that Regin managed to pull off the disguise because of her small melons. Tiger then asked Regin why she trusted him enough to reveal her true identity. She replied that he had no ulterior motive and even passed her test when she previously asked him to bathe her, shocking him. However, Tiger asked if she could prove her royal lineage, and she mentioned Lutetia, the capital of Artesium, which had a door only accessible to royal family members. Hearing this, Tiger decided they should head to Artesium immediately. Meanwhile, Thenardier received a delivery of dragons he had ordered, promising to use them to tear through several war maidens. However, this was all part of Ganelon's mischievous plans. The following day, Thenardier destroyed Ganelon's army with his new dragons, planning to do the same to Tiger and Princess Regin. Reports soon reached Tiger that Thenardier had attacked Artesium, but he insisted their plans remained unchanged and headed to Artesium to prove Regin's identity. On their way, they faced off against Thenardier's army, and as the battle intensified, Ludmila and Eleonora fought against the dragons. After several attacks, Ludmila managed to freeze three dragons with her magical weapon, eliminating them, but two more powerful ones appeared. These dragons deflected their attacks, frustrating both war maidens. Meanwhile, Tiger and his soldiers battled Thenardier's army, resulting in no clear victory as both armies retreated for a break. The battle resumed four hours later, with Tiger's center army pretending to flee, only to rejoin the fight and destroy more of Thenardier's soldiers. During this, Eleonora and Ludmila faced the two remaining dragons, and they managed to take down one with their combined efforts and powers. Facing the final, strongest dragon, they jumped into the air, summoned their powers, and charged at it. Ludmila showered it with ice shards while Eleonora plunged in with her sword, stabbing the dragon and activating her dragon art, which caused the dragon to explode. After the intense fight, the two war maidens sat back to back, confident that Tiger would handle the rest. Following this, Tiger met with the girls and discussed their next move over a meal. He explained that they needed to go to Artesium to validate Regin's lineage, which would help expose Thenardier's misdeeds. Tiger asked Regin what they should expect under the city of Artesium, so she explained that all she knew was from her father, as she had never entered herself. Their goal was the temple Holy Grotto, where the founder of the country received divine guidance and decided to become king. Later that night, Bertrand approached Tiger and expressed his desire to follow him everywhere, even to the afterlife, since he was old and couldn't do much in battle anymore. Tiger agreed but made him promise to retreat if things went south. The next day, they set out for the temple and were surprised by its small size, Upon entering, Regin showed them around, explaining some of the artwork on the walls like a useless history teacher. As they continued their unplanned tour, Thenardier suddenly appeared with his men, shocking them. An intense battle quickly began with Eleonora taking on Thenardier, while the others fought his men. After a short exchange of attacks, the walls of the cave started to collapse, then Tiger told his men to retreat immediately while he aimed his arrow at Steed. However, Steed overpowered and knocked him down, proving to be more skilled. Just as Steed was about to isekai Tiger, Bertrand jumped in to rescue him, taking the fatal blow instead. The place finally collapsed, and after a while, Tiger regained consciousness only to find Bertrand badly injured. 
In his final moments, Bertrand expressed pride and satisfaction in seeing the man Tiger had become, reminiscent of his father Urs before passing away. Eleonora and the rest hurried toward Artesium, intending to position themselves in the Holy Grotto. As they proceeded, they saw a sudden lightning bolt projecting upward from the ground in the distance and rushed to investigate. Eleonora discovered that Tiger had blasted the earth and rocked away with the power of his black bow. Upon returning to their base camp, Tiger sat down, feeling immense sorrow at the loss of his dear friend. Afterward, Eleonora met with Tiger and asked what he planned to do now that the situation had escalated. Tiger, still grieving, told her to come back the next day as he wasn't ready to discuss it yet. Eleonora, however, insisted that waiting might be too late and suggested that he could still choose to end the war, as Thenardier might be willing to negotiate if offered something enticing. Tiger questioned whether she would abandon her goals so easily, and she replied that she would fight her battles in the way she thought best. She added that whatever their decision, it should be something they could be proud of. This gave Tiger food for thought, making him wonder why she wasn't a motivational speaker. Feeling better, he approached Tida, who had been worried about him since their return, and apologized for causing her concern. Tida burst into tears, and he assured her that they would hold a funeral for Bertrand once they returned to Alsace. Later, alone with Eleonora, she revealed the other reason she had been helping him surprising him. She asked why he thought Muzinil attacked Brune South and tried to take control of it, to which he replied that it was because it was a trade center. Eleonora then hinted that fighting wasn't the only path forward. The next day, Tiger and his allies met with the Prime Minister, who reported that the king was feeling a little bit better off. They had discovered that Duke Ganelon had been poisoning the king, causing his mental breakdown. Bedum asked Tiger about his true intentions for fighting, and Tiger replied that he had no ulterior motives but was only fighting to protect Alsace. He then mentioned that after the war, he would return to being a Shaktidian prisoner, shocking Eleonora, who became embarrassed. He also suggested that if Alsace couldn't be kept safe within Brun, it could become part of Shechtid. Convinced by Tiger's words, Baduin allowed them to rush to the capital to see the king, who was dying from the poison's damage. As they traveled, Duke Thenardier intercepted them with his army. However, his forces fought less effectively, without their leader, Steed, and Thenardier's poor leadership. During the battle, Regin confided in Mashes her anxiety about becoming supreme commander when someone as capable as Tiger existed. Mashes reassured her, emphasizing that their struggle ensured her safe passage to the capital as the rightful heir to the throne. Meanwhile, Tiger eventually confronted Thenardier, questioning his attack on Alsis. Thenardier revealed that a personal vendetta against Jected drove his actions to keep them out of Broom's affairs. He admitted he had intended to destroy the land but failed. Upon hearing those words, Tiger vowed never to forgive him, but Thenardier played the victim card and blamed Tiger for his son's death. That instant, Tiger attempted to use his bow's ultimate power to kill Thenardier. But Eleonora intervened, advising him against using hatred and magic to achieve his goals. Heeding her words, Tiger calmed down, approached Thenardier with a single arrow, and discarded the rest. Thenardier doubted Tiger's ability to kill him with one shot. However, as Thenardier charged with his sword, Tiger called upon the goddess of wind and storms and released his arrow, striking Thenardier in the forehead and isicate him. This victory astonished the maidens as Tiger relied solely on his skill, rather than magical aid from Eleonora's sword. Following their victory, they visited the king, and he apologized to Regin for his failures as her deadbeat father and expressed gratitude to Tiger for his sacrifices. He offered Tiger any reward he wanted, and Tiger requested the port city of Aegans, which the king granted among other rewards. Just then, the king signed official documents confirming his promise, with Princess Regin as the second signatory, establishing her as the rightful heir to the throne. Afterward, he honored Tiger with the title of Knight of the Moonlight, surprising the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister was shocked because everyone who had ever received that title had ended up becoming the King of Brune, and at that moment, the king eventually died peacefully. Before long, Eleonora and Tiger began working together to unite Alsace and Leitmeritz through a trade route, just as she had hoped. The End Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this recap, be sure to comment arrow below. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell. See you on the next one.